This guy couldn't do nothing. He couldn't make, make, get himself out of a wet paper bag. We brought in a new mayor. Y'all brought in a new mayor. I was about to say, who's we? Uh, y'all brought in- <laughs> the issue I have there and the issue the NAACP had is, one, Delaware lacks accountability when it comes to our police school college. But he's never had anyone around him to tell him that you're a loser. Right. Well, if you look at Mr. Former President, on behalf of me, you're a loser. <laughs> Good evening, this is Dr. Curry. This is Kobe Owens. And welcome to The Source. Listen, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to all of you who we were unable to reach on last week. We just got tied up with the tornado that was coming through and flights were, were, were canceled. <laughs> just so much was going on and we weren't able. But I want to appreciate the fact that so many of you had reached out and said, you know, we hope everything is well and you are appreciating the information that we're sharing to you. Kobe, listen, what in the world is going on right now? What is a lot, going on? A lot, a lot, a I'm, lot. I'm hearing that, that a young lady is arrested and, and and, and the police are acting berserk. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so this past Thursday, there was a press conference over uh, Southbridge at the BP um, announcing a lawsuit against the state police for their actions. Um, a young lady was coming home from work. Um, she filled up at the BP. That's where the cops first spotted her. And then she left and continued down um, Church Street. It was at that point where four unmarked cop cars okay. surrounded her. Their front car got in front, backed up hit her car, pinned her in, six officers jumped out, guns um, drawn in her face. They broke her back window, the front two windows were down, and yanked her out the car. They took her cell phone, went through her cell phone to make sure there was no recordings or anything afterwards. But come to find out that they were looking for someone who was a foot taller, oh, wow. who was a man, mm. and someone who was in a completely different color car vehicle, um, in different model. So the officer's actions shows exactly how they interact with the community. These officers were wrong, and when a officer of higher rank got onto the scene, he sent them away. Mm. The issue I have there and the issue the NAACP had is, one, Delaware lacks accountability when it comes to our policing. Absolutely. What we've been talking about with Leah Board, the public information aspect mm -hmm. of it, in the community review board side of things, the, because those officers were sent away before their names were given to the mm -hmm. public, we cannot get their names whatsoever. Wow. Which means we can't follow up to see if these officers had um, prior incidents like this or if they've been disciplined for this incident. And also, they shouldn't have been sent away to right. go do this yet again. Right. You know, we're not saying that we're against police, but we're saying we want better policing in our community. Um, and this right here highlights the reason of why we're still fighting so much. Um, you know, you've been down Church Street. Yeah. People are out all the time. There was eyewitnesses, um, countless eyewitnesses who witnessed um, what the police did. They heard the cries of the young lady. Um, the state NAACP president um, was actually on the block talking to oh, someone wow. about another case. Okay. They were outside talking when this all went down. Mm -hmm. So he's also an eyewitness. Oh, wow. Um, so this is just another instance of why we need... Um, accountability here in Delaware. You know, I carefully sat and listened to you or and I'm I'm just shocked. I'm 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 mesmerized if I can use that language. But I want to recap to make sure I understood and I'm not in a twilight zone. A young lady left her hard working job, decided to gas her car up. She, her car is gassed up, she's on her way home. She's stopped by four cops four police cars unmarked around her, one causing an accident a windows are break, broken out, and you telling me that the person they were looking for was a male, but they recognized before or even during she's a female. She's pulled out shorter, smaller than who they're looking for, 
and they were told to just leave the scene? Yep. And here's the funny thing. The state police have made a counter offer um, to kind of brush this under, you know, under the way. They said they'll fix the window and give her $8,000. Oh, so this was the state police? This is the state police. And they said they'll fix the window and give her eight. What yes. about her emotional uh, distress? They don't care about that. Unbelievable. They don't Unbelievable. care about that. And by that offer, it shows that they don't care about and, that. And it also shows the value of black people. Yes. Had that happened in one of our white brothers and sisters community, it would have been termination immediately. Mm -hmm. What is the governor saying about this? He hasn't said anything. It's I, Honestly, it's been very quiet. Um, so we're waiting to see what the reaction to the lawsuit will be, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully that will make more people speak out and also make legislators pay attention. You know, one of the things in Delaware, like we've been saying, is the laws here shield the police yeah. unlike any other. We have the most pro-police Leoboard in the entire nation of the 17 states who either have one currently or who had one, mm -hmm. um, with Merlin and um, Illinois recently changing theirs. Mm. Um, Delaware, once we created ours, it was the most pro-police one. Um, and again, we're not saying that we are against police. We're saying that there has to be better relations between the community and the police. And, and I think that's what got in trouble with the Democratic Party. Some of the people who were more on the, um, the, the I guess you were the moderate Democrats, they, 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 they allowed the Republicans to label them with the notion of defund as if we don't want police. Right. We want better policing. And I think that has to be clear. And here's the thing. I mean, defund, they're right with the defund. Because whenever you take money from someone, you're defunding it. Right. But look, let's talk about what the Republicans have done. The Republicans have defunded our schools. Yes. They have stripped us of arts, sports. Yes. And then they have made the classroom, um, the teachers in the classroom struggle so much. And then wonder why we have such high dropout rate. Why we have so many kids who are struggling to get to the next but, grade. But you notice what's really interesting, and I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. What's so interesting is that it's being affected more in the black poor community. Yes. Because if you live in the right community, you can afford to send your children to the arts mm -hmm. and to make sure they have that arts experience. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, a lot of the murders, and I've said this several times, even from the pulpit, that a lot of times it's because they've taken the arts out of the classroom, that humanity is devalued. Mm -hmm. and, and, and because they are defunding and defunding, you know, it's, thank you for bringing that up because I think all too often we don't pay attention to what they're doing. But it, but but when you when we talked about defunding the police, it was to di divert the funds somewhere else right. to help. So whether it be with um, strengthening our community centers, whether it be strengthening community policing, whatever it is, it has to be reorganized. Exactly, and you know, over this last year, even more, I've had many of conversations with officers, both rank and file, leadership, chiefs. Um, from all the way from Newcastle down to Sussex, the little towns that only have three officers. I've talked to a lot of officers and they agree with the notion of changing and reallocating some of the funding. Mm -hmm. So it takes less of the responsibility off of them and put it on the people who are specialized in these different, whether it comes in mental health and health services or something like that and let them get back to what they signed up to do, and that's serve and protect. Okay. Um, we have put way too much on their plate and yeah. it's stretching them yeah. too thin. A lot of them agree with the notion. You know, and speaking of that, I know that was what the state police said. They were in the city carrying out. This is what Jay, who is not with us today, was talking about how people come across territories and they just do what they want to do. Yeah. But also, I saw in the News Journal did a, an article about a Wilmington going uh, from murder town to mystery town. And you know, it's really interesting, but let, let's just look at this real quick. Last fall, the Wilmington Police Department began reducing the amount of information they provide to the public about crime. Some of the information they release is sparse or is presented in a way that makes the incident look less severe. More recently, that information is often withheld from the public for days or weeks. For instance, on June 25th, residents of the Harlan neighborhood didn't know a neighbor had barricaded himself inside a house until they walked out of their homes and saw closed off streets and a massive police presence, with many officers carrying assault style rifles. We don't know very much information about what's going on here at this time. Um, the the News Journal found out about the barricade from a resident who called, not from the police. Residents milled outside the police tape and slowed their cars down, asking for tidbits of gossip or information from anyone outside. A month later, on July 22nd, 
two utility workers were shot in the middle of the day in the Hilltop neighborhood. One of them, Dupree Burroughs, died. Wilmington Police Department set out two press releases about the incident, but neither mentioned the men were Delmarva Power contractors working on a gas main. The department has also not explained to residents if this was an isolated incident or if the workers were intended targets. That left some workers worried. There, there has been a few guys that, that refused to come back to work in the city of Wilmington. Hopefully it was a one-off. Hopefully it's not something that repeats itself. Wilmington Police Chief Robert Tracy did not respond to multiple requests to discuss his department's recent lack of transparency with the public. Mayor Perzecki said over the summer that there is no effort to be covert about crime in Wilmington, and that sometimes the public cannot be aware about details of a crime because it would hamper the investigation. It certainly shouldn't be perceived as a culture of being covert, but no one's, that's not the way we operate. I don't think you'd find that in our office. Without this information, people don't know not to walk down a street where a drive-by shooting has just occurred, or step outside their homes into an active siege. Instead, citizens get their information from whatever rumors are being spread on the street, whether they are true or not. You know, it's really interesting as we looked at that video that we have gone from murder town to mystery town. Now, I would not have an issue if that was exactly it, from murder to mystery. But the point, how it should have been written, it's, it's murder and mystery. Right. Because we still are high in the, in the murder mm -hmm. rate, and we are still, and now they're hiding. What is going on with that? Yeah, so they've been manipulating data ever since yeah. this administration has taken um, over for the city of yeah. Wilmington. And you know, it's a thing that, you know, this current mayor, yeah. truly believes in because if we hide the numbers then people won't be scared then businesses come and we can grow businesses right. but here's the thing the community is suffering this is something i've talked about for the last three four years now um you saw in there one incident was right around the corner from my house with yeah. the barricade um and the guy taking um his mother hostage right. so that incident when i go on their website and look at crimes, it's not reported. There was actually another incident at 35th in Washington where a man shot um, his spouse in the head and then oh. went and committed suicide down by the Brandywine. Um, and they just have that as a domestic dispute. They do not have that oh, wow. as a gun violence incident. Now, luckily the lady survived, but that is what we're dealing with right now in the city of Wilmington. And that's sh really shocking because how many, other incidents are going on like this that we don't truly know about. And this could be the reason why even my office have called the mayor's office asking for a plan. I want to know what is the plan. When it was time to redevelop the riverfront, we had a plan. The plan was very clear. What will happen in the hotels that would be there, so on and so forth. With this murder rate, Dennis Williams served as the mayor and they felt, you know, this guy couldn't do nothing. He couldn't make, make, get himself out of a wet paper bag. We brought in a new mayor. Y'all brought in a new mayor. I was about to say, who's we? Uh, Y'all brought in. <laughs> and, and now we are, we are, we are, we are right. higher than we were and we, we are no longer just um, a murder town, but now we, we hide better, more professional. In 2015, we had record high numbers under Dennis Williams. Mm -hmm. No arguing that. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was the highest ever. Yeah. Under this current administration, yeah. he's mm -hmm. been in for five years. Three of those years have absolutely obliterated yeah. that statistic. Yeah. But yet, in those same years, how some have written it and how his office has spun it is, Wilmington is the best mis or best mis-sized city to come live in. Mm. Where. You know, we're a mystery town. It's been called everything except for Murder Town USA again. Mm -hmm. And it seems and as though... Could, and, that, and that could be racial, too. Yes. See, see I'm not going to let that pass. That could about be racial, to that. too, because you, you don't want to label that with a white mayor. Yes. But you don't mind labeling that with a black mayor. Right. And we have to be very mindful of those tricks and antics that, mm -hmm. that are done. And how this stuff is crazy. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I literally was about to yeah. say that, that, you know, the difference, the only difference is... Dennis was black and um, Paziki is white. And here's the thing, he has a plan for Riverside East. Yeah. He has a plan to develop West Side, but when it comes to how we're gonna strategically stop gun violence, he is mute. Mm. 
Mm. He even had a community forum where he talked about development when the community forum was about gun violence. And let me tell yeah. you, the residents over in the first district mm. let him have it that they didn't care about development down at the riverfront. They care about the young kid who had just been killed mm. in our neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're dealing with. And it seems as though um, time and time again, the people who are in power are not listening to the community on what they want to Can say. Can I say to my Wilmington community, and I want to say this very carefully, it's time for us to stop allowing people to hand us fish sandwiches, but give us the manual that we may be able to fish and eat for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. We have to stop playing this, if it's white, it's right, if it's black, it's set back. Now you may say, Pastor Curry, that is totally, or Dr. Curry, that's totally wrong. That is not the issue. Look at how many black people are in his administration. Look at this, that, and the other. But listen, listen, the underhand and the hidden hand of racism is still going on. This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. One of the, the young man with the TikTok, he's a member, he was yes. a part of our church, a part of our holy soldiers. And I have not heard hardly anything else on that. At some point, we have to stop giving these passes to certain, if this would have happened under Dennis Williams, mm -hmm. even the cops coming into the city, arresting this young lady to the level that they did, it would have been blew up all national news. But some people take care of themselves and mm -hmm. those who are like them. Right. I'm not happy about that. Neither am I, and I feel sorry for the young man who yeah. was killed. Um, he had, what, 2.4 million, Four million mm -hmm. followers on TikTok, bringing light and joy to yeah. so many. Yeah. Um, another innocent life lost here in the city of Wilmington, yeah. and the mayor is yet to get mute. And, and, how, and the reason why I believe he can be mute is because he's given out enough fish sandwiches. Yes. Yep. And, and, and to the black leadership and the black community leaders who uh, receive these fish sandwiches and not hold the mayor accountable for uh, the murders that's carrying in our, in our community, as well as the violence that is going on, the hiding of the police brutality and things that's going on, this is unfair. Mm -hmm. And you know what, I'm gonna calm down a little bit because at the end of the day, I don't want it to be like it's an angry black man. I'm too educated for that. But what I am going to say is that at some point, somebody has to represent right. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I was so attracted to you as a brother who really have become selfless to help somebody else. We have too many black leaders in our community who is literally receiving these fish sandwiches and keeping their mouths closed. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we don't have any grants here at East Zion Fair, Good. so I cannot be bought or I can't be muzzled or all those other things. But I, I just got a little indignation just then because how is it? that we treated Dennis the way we treated him. And like you said, you were honest. Mm -hmm. It was some unprecedented numbers. Right. But now, yep. it is now, those numbers are baby numbers mm -hmm. compared to where we are now. Exactly. This is totally not right. We'll be right back.
And we're back. Well, there's several things that's going on, even on the national level, uh, mm -hmm. Brother Kobe. And right now, it's, it's interesting how the the Republican governors are are just steamrolling over um, a, a lot of our uh, Republican states. Yes. And and this whole issue with the voter rights, and and, and in particular, they got the governor in Texas. Yes. Who have made it very clear? I'm going to continue to call session after session until I get my way. And that is to suppress black folks and colored, people of color from voting. Mm -hmm. Help me to understand. Yeah, so, you know, I've been following this very closely, especially after what happened in Georgia and then the walkout that they staged last time. Um, and on this show, I said that I had predicted that the governor's probably gonna call a special sh did. session. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did. Mm -hmm. And it, it's now open. Um, as of last week, and then it's going to go until August the 6th. So what over 50 House Democrats decided to do was decided that the only thing they could to stop this bill was not only just break quorum again, but leave and flee the state. Yeah. Um, what is going on is a strategic effort by the GOP to hold on to power by introducing over 400 of these voter suppression bills. Mm. And Texas is ground zero for some of the worst that I've seen ever. I've studied the Jim Crow era voting, and I've studied the numerous bills that have come up mm. so far this year across the nation, all 50 states, and they have the worst. Um, so those 50 plus House Democrats decided to flee to D.C. Um, to encourage um, the U.S. Senate to break the filibuster to get this voting legislation passed. The um, first part, the For the People Act, has already passed the House. Mm -hmm. um, President Biden had already said he will sign it right away. Mm -hmm. We are just waiting on the Senate. The House is still drafting the John Lewis Voter Advancement um, Act, and the Senate is waiting on the House to do that. But you have commitment from the President to sign that as well, too. I talked to my friend, uh, State Rep Jasmine um, Crockett from House District 100 in Texas, who's now in D.C. right now. Right. Um, she was the youngest elected. She had the she won by the narrowest margin in 2020. Um, she said that it was her duty and responsibility to become a fugitive to protect her constituents. Mm -hmm. And the governor already stated that as soon as they step ground mm -hmm. in Texas again. Mm -hmm all of them are being arrested mm -hmm. and going to jail. Now, is that a part of the, just so, because one of the mm -hmm. things that people are impressed with our show is that we do try to give details. So, is, does he have that right? Yes. Okay, so it is in their code to yes. do this. It is it's in law that the legislators are required to be in session if session is open, if it is called, and do their jobs. By them not being there for any reason, mm -hmm. you are breaking the law and you can go to jail. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, he's promising to uphold that. Um, legislators left their families, they left their friends and came to D.C. Um, and, you know, this is a huge, mo uh, a huge, mo uh, huge mo uh, move oh. for them. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> this he got right. to me earlier. Yeah. Huge move for them. Yeah. Um, so therefore, you know, we need to support them, but yeah. also we need to call on our local delegation right. to stand with them as well, too, and get the job done. Yeah, the, the governor really shocked me, but you know what, under after a regime of Trump, nothing really shocks me or fooled me with when it comes down to the political scene, especially the Republican Party. Um, and he was very adamant and he was very clear. He, there was no confusion in what he said he's going to do uh, once they step foot back on. The first thing that came to my mind was, can he do that? And, and we see that it is a part of code. So they have studied the playbook to make sure that whatever they need to do, they can just do it. Yep. You know, and it's interesting. So I want you to see what he said. The Texas governor, he says that when you return to the state, you all are going to be arrested and cabined in the Capitol is how he put it until the vote on this bill is taken until he, he says you do your jobs. Let me play for you what he said. Uh, I can and I will continue to call special session after special session after special session all the way up until election next year. And so if these people want to be hanging out wherever they're hanging out on this taxpayer paid junket, they're going to have to be prepared to do it for well over a year. As soon as they come back in the state of Texas, they will be arrested. They will be cabined inside the Texas Capitol until they get their job done. 
What do you say to that? Well, uh, yeah, I, I think, first of all, the governor is not the king. We live in a democracy. And uh, so he can't just make those types of statements. And secondly, uh, the misstatement about this being a taxpayer junket is totally false. The House Democratic uh, Committee paid for uh, our stay. They paid for our travel. And uh, those are dues that we pay as members of the House Democratic uh, Caucus. So uh, a lot of misinformation, a lot of misleading information by our governor. But let me tell you that we are not going to buckle and we are not going to back down and fold our hands to something that he is saying. What he has done is he has forgotten the, fundament the fundamental needs of Texas. When we talk about the grid, when we talk about access to health care, when we talk about flooding in the Rio Grande Valley, that this has happened the fourth time in a row and he has not looked at funding or any type of infrastructure that is important for the people of Texas. He is placing politics over people and that needs to stop. People come first, democracy comes first, voting rights come first, and the people of Texas are the ones that are uh, being placed in this position because of him. Yeah, you can see how 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 adamant he is about making sure you come back. We're gonna get you, and we're gonna not only lock you up, but we're gonna lock you up in a place where we can say we got a quorum. Yeah. And that's what I really wanted to make sure that the people understand. He knows what he's doing, but you know what I think? Th they understand the trend that is being set in Texas. Mm -hmm. The Republican Party, and, and I and I don't have any bones with telling the truth. I am a Democrat. Um, I'm ready to become an independent because I get so frustrated. But but I am a Democrat. But we don't strategically plan like they do. Mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell said, I want to make sure that the courts are, are, are conservative. He focused on it and he executed his plan. Illegal sometimes, yeah. but that's what they did. They're seeing in Texas, it's changing. It's not the red, ruby red um, a Republican state anymore. You talked about your friend who, the 100th district, I yes. think it is, um, won by a little bit. They see the trend. Mm -hmm. So what they really have to do now suppress. Right. But can I just tell you about I'm a little bit older than you. <laughs> the generation before me, black people, people of color, Latino brothers and sisters, whenever we see that we up against a trouble, we get stronger, mm -hmm. we get wiser and we get better. What has to happen now? One of the things that we're going to talk about Biden's speech that I do agree, we got to educate to follow the rules because we are not rule breakers. Right. However, I feel that they are purposefully, purposefully doing what they're doing because they don't want to lose power. Mm -hmm. 100%. And you know, when we say, si se prede, we're in this together, mm -hmm. it means that it is time to fight for what is right. Mm -hmm. um, what is happening in Texas is you're seeing the Latino vote come out and yeah. actually vote and yeah. they're voting in force now yeah. and that is what is scaring them that's why it's trending more blue um because of the horrible policies that um have been pushed in texas for so long and then also um I'm really good friends, um, and he's a mentor to me, to former Housing Secretary Julian Castro okay. and his brother Joaquin Castro, yeah. Congressman Castro, um, and talking with them, the dynamics of Texas is changing. But you're going to see when they draw, redraw these districts, both on the congressional level um, and on the state level, they're going to try to pack the minority vote together in as many um, places as they can so that it's the least amount of Democratic votes coming out um, in different districts. So, you know, that's another thing that we have to be aware of is making sure not only we win the presidency in these congressional seats, yeah. but also these local legislative seats. And, we, and what's really interesting is that we do forget about the local, mm -hmm. but a lot of stuff is being transpired, transpired there. You know, I want to shift over to Biden's speech, and I felt he did a phenomenal job. I thought he was passionate. He gave the strong plea. Um, but I, I, I come to you um, with some, I'm a little concerned. Mm -hmm. We're going to show his, a, a clip out of his speech where he, where he talks about we are facing the most significant test of our democracy since the Civil War. We, mm -hmm. We're going to show that. If this is true, how come he has not come out and said, I have a change of heart, blow up the filibuster? Mm-hmm. We, we blew up the filibuster for judges. 
Yes, that, some people say that was a mistake because now the Republicans using it against us. Okay, when it comes down to democracy, right? okay, I think we needed, this needs to be blown up. Mm -hmm. And Manchester, is that how you say his name? Manchin. Okay, thank you, because <laughs> I don't try to remember his name. But, but Manchin is on the hot seat, mm -hmm. and he should be convinced but I, I, I'm willing to bet you it's more than him. Mm -hmm. I wonder, Chris Coons, who's a very personal friend of mine, where are you on that issue? I wonder, um, 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 Carney, who is a very close friend of mine and is ready to come on our show, where are you on that? Because they are, so you got one or two who's carrying the water, mm -hmm. but others are, have not come out and said, blow it up. Mm -hmm. If I was um, um, the, 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 the Senate, um, the, 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 um, what do you call the head of the Senate? Senate leader? Yeah, the Senate leader. I would call for a Democrat vote before the vote. Mm -hmm. Because we're giving our mansion such a bad rep, which he deserve it. But he's not by himself. Yeah, and actually that's exactly how it can change. They can call for a rule change vote. Mm -hmm. um, Amy Klobuchar would probably sponsor it, being the, um, in charge of the Rules and Administration Committee. Um, and what will happen there is it's an up and down vote, Minor um, minority um, versus majority. You'll see it voted on party lines, um, but I think you would also see a lot of Democrats side with the Republicans. Mm. Um, you will definitely see um, Mansion and Cinema go with the Republicans, but I think there there's probably another six or seven Democrats who still aren't there yet, mm. willing to move that because they fear that if they do that, then it will be used against them when they're in the minority. But you can't govern, you can't legislate in fear. That's you have right. to be bold, and you have to give the people something to want to come out and vote for you again. Mm -hmm. Now, the majority leader, he won't do that because of the fact he wants to protect his caucus. But honestly, I think Chuck Schumer isn't the strongest. If you want to do it, you end the filibuster, right? Mm -hmm. And then you pass legislation that will open up voting rights. Or you do a carve-out like they did with the um, with the J Supreme Court judges right, right. and then with all federal judges. Um, and that's how Mitch McConnell and Trump were able to get 200 judges appointed mm -hmm. um, in just four short years. You do a carve out for constitutional issues such as voting rights mm -hmm. and things that deal with our democracy. But if this was to happen and you pass the Forty People, the John Lewis voter advancement in DC statehood, I guarantee you we would still have the majority come January 3rd, 2023, in both the House and in the Senate. Right. It would also address the blatant mismanagement um, of campaign finances, yeah, I saw that. Um, dark money that pours into these yeah. races, major corporations that um, silence the voice of the people, mm -hmm. and you're seeing it happening right now. Mm -hmm. These corporations don't want to lose that power, so they're funneling even more money to these senators while the people are struggling to have their voices heard through their vote. Unbelievable. And, you know, and, and I, 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 I think if they don't, our democracy is done. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 and I don't want to pronosticate that. I really don't want that to be a true self-fulfilling prophecy. But if we do not protect the voting, the voters' rights to vote appropriately, our democracy is done. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump, you know the new book that's coming out next week, uh, and I'm just jumping around a little bit, uh, where um, the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I think it was, uh, he did this book and so many revelations came out of there. Everybody, even Republicans, were afraid of what this man would do and could do. Mm -hmm. I am concerned that we are sitting back and allowing even him, his shadow to still do things. Everything that these re Republican governors are doing and these Republican legislators is a part of the big lie right. that he put out there. And that lie is going to lead to him coming back in 2024. I would, I would hope not. I would hope not. But you think about it, if the election was rigged, how come so many Republicans did well? Right. He lost the election and he cannot live up with that. But the Republican Party is so afraid of him mm -hmm. that they're just going to go ahead and do what they want to they're going to do what he wants them to do. I agree with you. You know, if you just look at it, you know, from a non-biased way, why would you look at it and say they only wanted the presidency, but they want a 50-50 split 
in the Senate. They yeah. wanted a four-seat majority in the House. Yeah. They wanted to lose uh, most of the governorships and lose House races and state Senate races across the nation. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense to me or any logical person. And I've talked to my Republican friends about it who originally said, oh, yeah, this was a rigged election. I said, how? Explain to me that. Yeah. You know? So when they start thinking about it, they say, oh, well, that doesn't really make sense. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. He yeah. lost on the federal level. He lost the electoral college. But he's never had anyone around him to tell him that you're a loser. Right. Well, if you look at Mr. Former President, on behalf of me, you're a loser. <laughs> we'll be right back. My fellow Americans requires fair-mindedness, devotion to justice, corny as it sounds, love of country. Requires us to unite in common purpose and declares here and now, we the people will never give up. We will not give in. We will overcome. We will do it together. And guaranteeing the right to vote, ensuring every vote is counted, has always been the most patriotic thing we can do. Just remember, our late friend John Lewis said, freedom is not a state, it's an act. Freedom is not a state, it's an act. And we must act and we will act. For our cause is just, our vision is clear, and our hearts are full. For we the people, for our democracy, for America itself, we must act. God bless you all and may God protect our troops and all those who stand to watch over our democracy. But act. The president made a very passionate case for the two pieces of democratic legislation that would deal with voting rights and essentially wipe some of these, maybe test it in courts if they passed it, but wipe these Republican laws off the books, or at least try to. The president mentioned them at the beginning, but then he sort of conceded the point that that wasn't going to pass in talking near the end of the speech about how important it is for Democrats and their friends in the civil rights community and the voting rights community to educate people, to register people, to teach them about the new laws and to turn them out in 2022. That was sort of an admission right there from the president implicitly that they're not going to get a new federal law. And, and you mentioned that it would be an epic fail. Look, there were a lot of progressives, a lot of civil rights leaders who wanted the president to look the American people in the, or the Senate in the eye and say, this is so important, I'm going to change my mind, he, meaning his love of the filibuster, his love of Senate procedure, and then try to work the Democrats to do it. But he, he simply did not do that. And I think that will be, there will be great praise for the passion uh, and the anger in the president's speech, uh, praise for the promise to continue this fight, but there will be disappointment among those who count votes in Washington knowing that unless he's willing to change his own mind and change minds in the Senate, you will not get that vote in Washington. Bakari, what did you hear? I actually agree with John King. I mean, I think that the question is going to be, how much does this really mean to you? How much do you really want it? The oratory was brilliant. The emotion was palpable. But at the end of the day, he didn't mention filibuster. At the end of the day, he didn't mention cinema and mansion. I mean, I thought the speech was great. I thought the delivery was great. I thought the backdrop was great. But we've been here before. I mean, look, you had George Elmore in 1946, uh, who was what they deemed to be a Renaissance Negro, who filed a suit, Elmore versus Rice, in 1947, just so that black folk could vote in primaries in the South Carolina Democratic Party. You had um, um, uh, Freedom Summer in 1964 with the death of Goodman, Schroener, and Cheney. I mean, to quote John Lewis, John Lewis would do anything. He would actually get into good trouble because we know that the filibuster is rooted in injustice and oppression. And so I think that while the speech and the oratory were good, the substance and the question that many of us would have for the president of the United States, who we love, support and voted for, is how much does it mean to you? Because without getting rid of the filibuster, Without getting rid of the filibuster, you're going to have many people who came out and waited in line voting for you with absolutely no recourse. And Republicans will continue to steamroll and rip apart what we fought for and many people died for, which is now a Voting Rights Act, which is nothing but a nut. And we're back. Listen, so much has been going on, and we've been talking about the local and the national news. Well, Kobe, what's on your mind with the politics of today? Yeah, so, you know, the Delaware General Assembly is officially on break yeah. until January 8th of next year. Um, you have the U.S. Senate. They're doing a work um, week right now in the district and the House as well, too. 
Um, so a lot of things are kind of on break. People are enjoying the summer, um, but the president is still hard at work. Um, his big thing right now is negotiations around this infrastructure bill. Um, his ideal bill um, is a $3.5 trillion infrastructure right. bill that will go to public transportation, airports, um, it will go to roads, bridges, like we talked about last time with what happened down in Miami, right, right. Um, rebuilding the infrastructure of America. Um, so he's having meetings right now with some of the Democratic senators who are on the fence about that much spending going into it, who wants more of a bipartisan deal um, that would bring that number from 3.5 to about 2.3 trillion dollars, mm -hmm. bring it down from that, um, but it takes out a lot of stuff. Biden um, is looking at this and saying, look, at the end of the day, the money has to be spent um, because this is truly necessary right now in America. America has crumbling infrastructure. We're way behind other people yeah. throughout the world. Uh, we need to catch up to be competitive on a global scale. Um, so I think he has a bold vision with this, but it's going to take a lot of negotiations. They may have to do it if the bipartisan bill can't get done and it doesn't have what Biden wants to see in it. Um, they will be willing to do it through reconciliation, which has upset Joe Manchin, who believes that um, that defeats the purpose of good faith bipartisan um, negotiations. So maybe Joe Manchin is just a Republican opposing as a, a Democrat, because he, he he always got an issue with anything to advance the Democratic apart, uh, agenda. And I and I say that because every time I turn around, I'm hearing his name and never heard his name before <laughs> this 50 50 split really came came about but but let's talk about the infrastructure deal because like you said it was supposed to be a three point five trillion dollar mm -hmm. in initially and, and he's willing to come down a whole trillion dollars uh, to support but there are some things in the infrastructure that Biden understand that we need for example we do have he have enough a, a child care he had, and, and some of the Republicans were saying no 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 we don't need that's not infrastructure that's not the traditional right. infrastructure but honestly with so many parents especially women leaving the workforce because they yes. had no one to care for their children during this pandemic I think that that was something that was very much needed yeah no I I agree with you there um, and honestly the um, youth infrastructure is the most yeah. important infrastructure yeah. anyone can have because it's going to be who's our future right, right? where are we going to be able to sustain ourselves in on a global level mm -hmm. um, following that so that's where we're at with things right now um, and I, I truly believe that um, if this deal gets done it would be um, one that would be beneficial to a lot of Americans, but also Biden wants to see it done the right way. He wants to see strong union jobs. He wants to see well-paying union jobs out there for, and pinning people back to work, especially right after this pandemic. Now, do you think, Corey, uh, pronounce, uh, pronunciation. Do you think, um, Corey, that um, 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 that that um, I say Corey, but it's Kobe. But um, do you think um, it's going to get done? I think it is. I think it is. I think it's going to take longer than they expect. Mm -hmm. um, but this is also just going to highlight another reason why the filibuster is stopping so much progress in America. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to this infrastructure deal, like I said, it's going to be important, but it's going to be the, the deal that Biden truly wants isn't going to get past the filibuster. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're going to have to go to the reconciliation, which is one of those filibusters. Well, so that's how you think it's going to get done through reconciliation, right. not through a vote of the Senate. Center, center. So it, it, it will go through a vote in the Senate. The reconciliation is a carve out of the filibuster okay. where um, a bill's introduced. It has to, any amendment that wants to be um, introduced by either side has to be voted on. Okay. So it's called Votorama, right? That's when they go into those late night votes, the famous John McCain healthcare vote yeah. where he came in after, you know, four hours, five hours and did the thumbs down. That is a Votorama. Um, they go late into the night, sometimes into the next day, voting on the same bill um, until they finally vote on the actual bill. Um, Republicans are a little more strategic. They will put up hundreds of amendments um, just to draw the process out. Um, and then it has to go to the House, then it goes from the House back to the Senate, right. or it goes from the House to the Senate, to the Senate, to the House, and then it finishes off. Um, so they both have to go through that Votorama aspect of things, and then it goes to the President's desk. Yeah, so do, do you think, now I heard through um, some of the readings, I think it was the New York, Time, New York Times, where I read that um, 
maybe they should put this vote, some of this voter rights things, items, in some budgetary things that the Republicans are interested in, and let that be attached to. Do they have to have 60 members to agree to attaching it to, uh, or do they need just the 50? No, that's the amendment part of it. Uh -huh. So you can add anything. Um, you had, um, you have Republicans under the Trump administration add amendments to certain bills just to get Democrats on a record. Even though it wasn't a good written bill, but they would take Democratic talking points to say, oh, y'all want this so bad, go ahead, vote on it. And the Democrats would vote no, or they would vote not voting, um, because not to give into it. It's something that each side may use for political gains, mm. um, but technically, yes. So if you wanted to pit in, like last time, uh, when Senator Coons and Carper voted against it, um, a Democrat on a Democratic bill under a Democratic president pit forth the $15 minimum wage aspect of things. And eight um, Democrats joined in and voted against it, um, killing that measure. That could have changed, if they would have voted yes, the vice president could have been the 51st vote, and that would have changed um, our minimum wage here in the United States. Wow, interesting. The politics is really, it's, it's, it's thick and it's deep. Yes. And it's really sad, too, because we're dealing with people's lives. Mm -hmm. And to be American is, is a very proud moment, but there are some dark moments as well, mm -hmm. and we're living in one of those dark moments. Mm -hmm. um, what's mm -hmm. going on with the tax uh, child care? Yeah, so the first payments go have gone out um, as of Thursday the 15th. Um, 300 if you have a child under six years old. If you have a child from six to 17, it's 250. Um, and that will be continuous until the end of the year. So hopefully what that will do is help a lot of families still recovering from this pandemic who have had lost wages. Their kids' bills have not stopped because yeah. they're still growing kids. I know those food bills are high. Yeah. Um, but yeah. just, you know, all bills are high. Yeah. Um, but the food but the kids, high. yeah, but the kids did not stop eating during this pandemic. And yeah. I'm also, I'll consider myself a part of that too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, the this was a huge initiative of the American Rescue Plan. I think it's huge. You don't have to do anything if you've already followed your taxes for last year and that's what they're basing it off of and then also make sure you filed your taxes this year as well too um, in case this is be hopefully right now what's happening is there's legislators such as Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester who's pushing for this to become a permanent initiative um, to really help bring people out of poverty especially those who have kids. So just so we can understand clearly because sometimes we, we get Assuming that people really understand what you're doing, you're saying if a child is three and under, six, have, or six and under, they will receive three hundred dollars per child. Their parents, yeah, yeah right. The <laughs> parent, yeah, and we want to say that because some children will be like, "Where's my money?" It, it's not your money; it's your parents' money uh, to, to take care of you. But but if a child is seven and above, yes, then they receive two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yes, and that check automatically get deposited wherever they, or however way they got their. However, taxes. so whether you know you, however you get your return. Yes. Um, so if you have it as a check coming to you, you gotta wait a little bit. If you have direct deposit, whatever bank account you use there, so double check that. If you check change bank accounts, double check it, um, that would be the um, account that it gets deposited to. Okay, good. And, and I think that's very important for us to know that these things are, 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 are President Biden's and others' way of trying to pull our young, uh, pull us out of poverty. And, and I think that um, this is great. One other question I wanted to ask, just in case someone is thinking this, so if I'm on welfare, Will I get that 300 or 252? I believe so, yes. Okay, so we need to check that and we'll get yes. back to the community on that because I want to make sure that whatever information we give you is certainly legit. Yes. But I know that's a question that somebody mm -hmm. said, well, I'm on welfare and, 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 and I don't want anyone to feel bad because it's not like they're paying you a million dollars on welfare. Right. All of us have had hard times. I'm a child, I'm a product of the welfare system and God has been great and gracious. So I, I'm grateful for that. So we had an opportunity to, um, to really um, to, to address both the infrastructure situation and a part of, 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 of the American Rescue Act, mm -hmm. I think is where we got the um, child tax credit from. Right. Um, is there anything else on your mind, Brother Cole? No, so, you know, again, it was a very busy week. Yeah. Um, you know, going back from the voting rights to the child tax credit, mm -hmm. definitely under the voting rights, I had the honor um, of being there for that historic speech. 
um, and yeah. talking to the Reverend Al Sharpton yeah. um, and just talking about where we are as black America right now. We still have so much that we have to continue to push for. These initiatives are all good, they're powerful, um, but we still have to stay involved and still have to keep fighting. Yes, yeah, so we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ivan Thomas, the executive director of the DETV Foundation. And as you have seen for the last year and a half, we've been making some amazing strides in the city of Wilmington and the state of Delaware by our public access television station. The programs that we've been creating with your help, such as Good Morning Wilmington, The Chef Dana Cooking Show, One on One with Ivan Thomas, and Homeschool, a segment that comes from DETV Kids. We at DETV work hard to educate, update, and empower the community we ask you to continue helping by making a gift to support our work because at DETV, we work for you. Please visit our website today at DETVCH.com and in the top right, hit the donate button and give a gift. Any size would be helpful. Thank you so much for your support. And remember, Public Access TV is information and resources that everyone in Delaware can use. This was made possible in part by viewers just like you. Thank you for your amazing support. For more of our content, please make sure to visit our website at detvch.com. And we're back. Listen, um, I, I, it's sad that we are dealing with Corona still. We were so excited about, you know, reopening and so much is happening. And, and we're still in a, a pretty safe space. But this Delta variant, um, yes. it's just a lot. What, what? Yeah, so you're seeing two things happen with this Delta variant. One, you're seeing um, a high rate of people who are unvaccinated um, get the Delta yeah. variant and end up in the hospital again across the nation. And then also you're seeing young people who are vaccinated, but they're still not following certain regulations. You should still be wearing your mask. Yeah. Um, you should still be very careful with your hygiene and everything, um, who are also catching this Delta variant. Um, we are almost out this pandemic, but we're not out of it That's yet. That's right. You're seeing um, it, it absolutely destroy communities over in Africa right now. Yeah. Um, you're seeing it really in hot zones down in the South, um, in Mississippi and Alabama. Um, it is here in Delaware, it's here in Wilmington. Um, so please, please, please um, be careful as it continues to spread. Um, we don't want to go back into a shutdown. Right. Um, even though I enjoyed working from home um, <laughs> and being I able to not. do Zooms <laughs> in my pajama um, and just the top part um, in the suit, um, you know, we lost a lot of people yeah. and I don't want to see that happen again. There are so many families who have been disrupted by this. So we still have to be very conscious of what is going on. Um, through this and just again, this isn't just about you. It's about your neighbors. It's about your family um, So keep them in mind when you're out and about. Yeah, you know, and, and as we are looking at this whole Delta variant um, I, I watch going into Walmart going into the stores. It seems like the rule supposed to be if you are not vaccinated, you should still cover I am fully vaccinated and I still cover why because people decided I'm not going to get vaccinated and I'm not going to cover. Because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you cannot catch Corona. But what I want to make sure you clear on my position, I constantly, constantly wear a mask because my daughter who is 10 years old is not vaccinated. I don't want to take home to my daughter the coronavirus. I hope that you all would not be so much in a hurry. It's hot outside today. I don't want to put this mask on uh, when I go. Well, listen to me. 99% of the people who are catching the Delta um, variant are people who are unvaccinated. We have to take serious. Until we get totally out of this, we need to take every precaution to ensure that we are protecting ourselves and the people we love, and even the people we don't know. The Bible says, if I can just say this, that we are our brother's keeper. So I hope that when we are hearing about this variant, 
Don't just think about, oh, they're going to close it down again. We have personal responsibilities. And, you know, it's interesting how the Republicans have fought so hard against it after Trump is no longer in office. But what I'm told privately is that a lot of them have the vaccination, but they're putting it out there as if you should not take it. I wish we can do a truth uh, test to see or let reveal who has taken it, because you will find like Donald Trump, he and his whole family got the uh, Pfizer and never told anyone because they don't mind you dying. They just don't want to die. They will continue to highlight every mistake that is made. The Johnson and Johnson thing is just being talked about everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I, look, mistakes, things happen. But 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 they will not let you know that everything is well. That's why I decided to be transparent and say, look, I just had my first shot. I had my second shot. The second shot, I got a little tired, a little sore arm. But beyond that, that's it. There have been no other issues. I hope that you take serious that we are not out of this. And, Kobe, I hope that when you are with all of your colleagues in, across the country, when you're, you're interacting with them, that they be mindful of the fact that we got to deal with the communities that we come out of. Oh, Absolutely. And, you know, I have a woman to strong mask that I love wearing because um, I'm always repping my hometown um, wherever I am. And, you know, most of the circles um, I travel in are very aware. And that's what we're pushing right now is how we can bring our community together mm -hmm. to get vaccinated and to be aware that this is still going on and not get covid fatigue yeah. right not get tired because this has been going on still keep the same mindset i remember uh, going to the stores when it first hit last year and people uh, were wearing trash bags and gloves and <laughs> taped up and everything and now people are like oh well i didn't get it then so i'm yeah. good no it is still out there i mean this is still an issue for our community that's been killing black people and minorities at a higher rate yeah. um than our counterparts. Yes, so as of right now, all the churches are open, all the stores are open, everybody is moving about. Put your mask on, wash your hands, keep your distance. Let's act as if it is still here and happening strong so that we can protect each other and come totally out. If we don't do that, we're gonna find ourselves right back where we started, where all the churches are closed down, all the malls are closed, all the stores are closed, and we have to hope and pray that somebody can bring us something to eat. We'll be right back. I'm getting vaccinated against COVID-19. Yes, there could be some short-term side effects from the vaccine, but they go away in a day or two. Those are signs that my body's building protection. It's worth it to avoid serious problems from COVID-19. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Brother Kobe, it has been a very good show, and I'm so glad yes. you got back safe <laughs> and from all hurt, harm, and danger, and we were in some storms, but we made it back. But as we're closing out this show, what's on your mind? Anything on your mind? Yeah, so I am glad to be back. I, you know, I was a little worried about, um, you know, they're going to try to keep me down here uh, <laughs> with my, a few of my flights being canceled due to the storm, um, but I am back. I do want to remind everyone, please pay attention to what's going on in your community. Yeah. Like I've been saying from the very first show, um, I'm really big on policing reform and policing community relations um, and we really need that community empowerment yeah. policing yeah. Uh, what is happening with miss watson please follow that case but also if you see something feel free to reach out to me the NAACP.